Chapter 1. Empathy is the route towards better communication. Effective communication helps you build strong and lasting relationships. But when you misuse communication, you can accidentally cause problems and hurt those around you. So many issues can be resolved with effective communication, and many problems can be totally avoided in the first place. To communicate well, you need to use empathy. Empathy is a skill we develop throughout our lives, and it's the ability to walk a mile in someone else's shoes. You're able to put yourself in their place, understand how they feel, and respond in a more caring and understanding way. Empathy is a vital skill, but it's not one we're born with. Focus on understanding how others are feeling to build up this key life skill. Without empathy, it's not possible to communicate without causing problems. You're not able to relate to the other person or completely understand them either. Empathy is something you can develop, but it requires you to put aside your own thoughts for a moment and really pay attention to the other person. Listen, try to understand, and forget about your own needs for a second. By doing so, you'll notice your communication efforts improve significantly. Not that many people understand where they're going wrong when it comes to communication. It's important to be self-aware and understand that everyone can improve. By learning where you might be falling short, you can put new methods into practice and turn your relationships around for the better. Did you know? There are three types of empathy, cognitive, emotional, and compassionate. All three work together seamlessly. Chapter 2. Remember the value of the person you're speaking to. How many times have you been listening to someone, but you found that your mind starts thinking about something else? It might be your to-do list or wondering what you're going to have for dinner but you're not really listening to what the other person is saying. Leal noticed that he was having this problem a lot, and it concerned him. He was listening to a friend talk about a new work endeavor, and no matter how much he tried to focus, his mind just wouldn't play ball. He kept noticing what he was doing and forced himself to listen, but the pattern just kept repeating itself. While he was talking, and during this back and forth of focusing, drifting, and refocusing, I caught and asked myself, wait a minute, do I really care about what he's saying? I had to honestly say to myself, maybe not, at least not in that moment. Bento C. Leal III It's not always about not being interested in what they're saying to you at that moment. It can be that you simply don't place enough value on that person overall. Remember, the main driving force behind quality communication is to have a connection with the person with whom you're communicating. Leal suggests that we should focus more on recognizing the value of the person in front of us and understand that everyone is unique and worth listening to. However, the first step towards that is to know that you are also unique and worthy of being heard. You can't recognize the true value of someone else until you see it in yourself. Every single person you encounter is special in their own way. Communicating with people you've never met before allows you to develop as a person too. Leal also suggests using a four-step routine when you notice that your mind is wandering. Number one, stop for a second and notice what you're doing. Number two, think about the person's value and what they're saying to you. Number three, next, change tactics and turn your attention back to the person and really listen. Number four, finally, make a vow to put yourself in their place and be present in the moment. When you notice your mind drifting from a conversation, stop. Remember what this person might be able to teach you. Change tactics and do something about it. Chapter 3. Learn to listen to understand, not just to hear the words. Most people assume they're good listeners, but they simply hear the words. Trust listening is more than that. It is about making an effort to understand and look beyond just the words spoken. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. Stephen R. Covey Many people complain that their partner doesn't listen to them. And over time, this can cause major problems. It makes a person feel undervalued and unseen. Learn to actively listen, and you will sidestep a million problems, both in your relationship and other areas of your life too. The first step to active listening is to avoid thinking about anything else, and instead zone in on the other person. Use empathy to see things through their eyes. Then, really listen to their words and watch their body language and other nonverbal cues, such as facial expressions and hand gestures. Avoid trying to second-guess what they're going to say or thinking about what you want to say. Interrupting someone when they're speaking will ruin the conversation. Don't just hear the words. Really zone in on what they're saying and feeling. Next, really listen to how they're speaking to you. Pay close attention to the tone of their voice, how fast or slow they're talking, 
and whether they're stumbling over their words. Emotions aren't often expressed properly in words. It's usually nonverbal cues that tell you about how the person is feeling. Active listening allows you to recognize this and read between the lines. Once they've finished talking and you haven't interrupted them, repeat back a summarized version of what they've said to show them that you listened and understood them. This can help to deepen conversations because the person feels valued and safe to voice their feelings. Becoming a better listener helps to deepen connections, builds trust, and enhances relationships. Chapter 4. If someone is not speaking to you, ask yourself why. Sometimes we go quiet. We don't feel like there's any point in talking to our partner because we don't feel like they would understand, or they've done something to upset us, and we don't feel that we want to communicate. If you're finding that your partner or someone in your life isn't opening up, avoid becoming frustrated and instead question why that might be. There are several reasons why someone may close up and just not want to speak about anything too deep. The most common reason is that they're waiting for an apology. Have you done something or said something that hurt their feelings and caused them to remain quiet out of anger or genuine upset? One of the most common reasons for someone not opening up is that they're hurt and they're waiting for things to be put right. Do you need to apologize? If there is someone in your life who you feel is being quite closed around you and won't open up as much as they usually would, ask yourself if you have caused the situation. Have you done something to this person without realizing it? Think back and use your empathy to put yourself in their place. If you find something, rectify the situation by apologizing in a meaningful way and also let them know why you're apologizing. Understanding what you're apologizing for takes honest self-awareness. Dig deep and use your empathy to understand how others are feeling. Chapter 5. Overcome Communication Blocks for Better Relationships Many people struggle with communication from time to time, and it's usually down to common blocks that we all fall foul of occasionally. However, sometimes these can become habits, things that we do without really noticing. Over time, this can cause major problems in your relationship and work settings. Being more aware of common blocks to effective communication will help you understand whether to work on these things or not. Awareness is key in this situation. Being aware of how you communicate helps you be more in the moment and understand whether you're using negative communication tactics. The most common pitfalls are assuming that the other person knows what you're talking about or that they're somehow a mind reader, jumping in to advise the person without listening properly, or even knowing if they want your advice, and being judgmental. Another very common block is trying to one-up the other person. For instance, if they tell you that they've had a bad day, you will tell them that yours was far worse, making them assume that they can't talk to you about what has gone on because you won't take them seriously. You gain nothing by trying to outdo the other person. Listen, remember their value, and enjoy the conversation. Be more aware of common blocks and identify whether you regularly fall foul of any of them. Chapter 6. Learn how to accurately convey your thoughts and feelings for a better connection. It can be hard to express your feelings accurately especially when you're having problems in your relationship. However, it's important to avoid the chances of misunderstandings. Of course, you need to know how to achieve this in a way that encourages the other person to sit and listen to you. Learning how to talk about your feelings will allow you and your partner to overcome problems more easily. Avoiding this can lead to major dramas. Leal suggests that a good starting point is to think about what you want to say beforehand. This avoids saying things in the heat of the moment that could be taken the wrong way or cause further damage. Also, make sure that you're using statements beginning with I rather than you to cut down on the chances of the other person feeling like you're blaming them for how you feel. When you're speaking, be mindful of what you're saying and make sure that you choose the words you speak carefully. Make sure you're clear and concise and check the tone of your voice. Rather than being sharp in tone, be soft, as this will encourage the other person to use their empathy to listen to what you're telling them. How do you talk? Do you use sarcasm? Do you use a sharp tone? Spend some time evaluating your vocal style. You might be causing problems without realizing it. A common problem for people who are trying to express complex feelings is that they jump from one feeling to another, which is confusing for the other person. Stick to one problem at a time and be straight to the point when you're speaking. It's also a good idea to express gratitude to the person once you've finished explaining, thanking them for listening to what you've said. This is a back-and-forth type of communication that enhances relationships. It means both parties feel listened to 
and they both have their chance to speak. This deepens their connection and helps them overcome problems without significant difficulties. Speaking and listening are vital parts of communication, but only one person should do each at a time. Chapter 7. Put time and effort into your relationships on a regular basis. It's important to recognize your relationship as something unique and special in your life. As such, you need to dedicate time and attention to it regularly. This means you're tending to it and ensuring that it has all the nutrition it needs to grow. Focusing upon effective and positive communication will do this, but you need to keep practicing your skills and working together. Tend to your relationship regularly and allow it to develop over time in a positive way. Do not take your partner for granted. Your relationships will be totally different from your friendships, and both will be completely unique to the relationship you have with your partner or your family members. Recognize the difference between relationships and approach them all in a unique way. It's not difficult to look after your relationships. All you need to do is communicate clearly and with empathy. Check in on those in your life on a regular basis. Dedicate time and attention and be present in the moment. The more you do these things, the more they'll become habits. Practice focusing on all the unique relationships in your life. The more you practice, the more you'll naturally continue this focus, as if by second nature. Conclusion Communication sounds like it should be an easy subject, but it's something with which many people struggle. It's easy to fall into negative habits that wreck relationships over time, from being passive-aggressive without realizing it, to being accidentally sarcastic just because you're in a slightly bad mood that day. These are all issues that can cause misunderstandings and arguments. Once that happens, you're on a slippery slope towards relationship failure unless you check yourself ahead of time. By being more aware of how you communicate and being honest and open about where you can improve, you'll find that your relationships improve at the same time. It takes time and self-awareness, but it's a worthwhile effort to put in. It won't just improve your primary relationships, but you'll notice that new relationships start on the same positive footing. The biggest stumbling point for many people is listening. It sounds like the easiest concept, but it's something many people fail to do properly. Active listening means tuning in to the words, the body language, and other cues the person gives you. You need to be aware of them to piece the puzzle together. Once you do that, you'll read between the lines and understand how someone is feeling and what they really want. By dedicating time to this, you will notice that your relationships improve tenfold. You'll also set a great example for those around you who may be motivated to work on their communication skills too. The truth is that we can all improve, but some people want to do so and others lack the motivation. Try this. Number one, when someone is speaking to you, focus all of your attention on them and avoid interrupting. Try and feel what they're saying and put yourself in their place. This will encourage empathy. Number two, learn to read body language by being more aware of people around you. What do you think their body language is telling you? Do their actions completely change their words? Number three, practice using I statements instead of you statements when talking to your partner. I feel upset that we don't spend as much time together is better than you're always with your friends.